current sources and sinks the introduction for this one now we'll discuss current source and current sink a simple current source or sink is nothing but a two terminal device and the current flowing through it must be constant irrespective of its voltage across its terminals the current at any instant of time is independent of the voltage across it a simple current sink is implemented with n mos and a simple current source is implemented with p mos so the current flowing through n mos transistor is independent of v out or not so first we will see normally a mos transistor can be operated either in cutoff or linear or saturation region under saturation region even though the output voltage increases the current flowing through is going to be constant that's why only it is treated as saturation or constant current region so i out that is drain current is going to be independent of output voltage v out so a simple n mos transistor can act as current sink because the current flowing through it is independent of voltage across its terminals look at these characteristics these are output characteristics or drain characteristics of n mos until the voltage is going to be vds v out implies nothing but drain to source voltage of n mos until the voltage will become equal to vgg minus vt not the transistor will be in linear region and whenever v out is greater than vgg minus vt at that time it will be coming into saturation region where the drain current becomes constant condition for saturation region is nothing but drain to source voltage must be greater than or equal to gate to source voltage minus threshold voltage so v out should be greater than or equal to vgg minus vt not vgg is nothing but gate voltage v out is nothing but drain voltage vt is threshold voltage so if an n mos or p mos to be act as current sink or current source it must be in saturation region and the minimum voltage across output terminals to get the current independent of voltage is nothing but vgg minus vt not which is nothing but condition for saturation region since the transistor must be in saturation the minimum voltage you have to apply is nothing but vgg minus vt not or it can be more than that one also so the minimum is nothing but vgg minus vt not now simple current mirror this is the circuit diagram for simple cmos current mirror where there are two transistors q1 and q2 and out of that one q1 is diode connected mosfet diode connected mosfet means whose gate and drain are going to be shorted a transistor with its gate and drain are shorted is normally referred as diode connected transistor and a reference current i in is flowing into q1 and q2 is going to be connected with same vgs as q1 q2 and q1 are given with same vgs which are going to be giving some current i out cmos current mirror the principle of the operation is if gate source voltage of two identical transistors are equal then the channel currents should be equal whenever you are going with two identical transistors for that one if you give same gate to source voltage definitely we expect same currents in the drain so the same principle here we are going to use q1 is saturated that is drain and gate are shorted so that q1 is indeed in saturation and which is going to be getting a current of i in and the same voltage is given to q2 since it is identical definitely it is also producing the same current as input so i out is equal to i input if q1 and q2 are identical with same aspect ratio that is w by l of second transistor is w by l of first transistor So it is considered as current mirror.
output current is exact replica of input current. Not only this case, we can get output current as a multiple times of input current. That multiple may be greater than or may be less than 1 also. The same principle can be explained in other way also. How output current is equal to I reference. Okay, look at this one. If you are going with the first diagram on the left side, which is nothing but a simple M1 transistor whose gate and drain are going to be shorted, that is, that makes M1 to operate in saturation and current flowing through that one is nothing but I reference. Under saturation, we know that one drain current is always a function of VGS minus VT only. It doesn't depend on drain to source voltage. So simply, I reference is a function of VGS. I reference is a function of VGS. So if you are going with VGS, we can write inverse function of I reference. We can write whenever I reference is function of VGS, we can write VGS as function of I reference. That's why in place of VGS for M1, it is given as F inverse of I reference. Now, if this F inverse of I reference is given as input for M2, look at this second diagram. This point is now connected to the gate of M2. So now this is F inverse of I reference, which is nothing but VGS. I out is function of VGS. I out is function of function inverse of I reference. By that time, function function inverse get cancelled. So what you will get is nothing but I out is equal to I reference. This is the second way of explanation. First one is for identical transistors, if they are having the same aspect ratio, if you give same gate to source voltage, they will be driving giving the same drain currents. That's why I out is equal to I reference. Second way is nothing but simply under saturation, drain current depends only on gate to source voltage. So that ID is function of gate to source voltage or VGS is only function, VGS is inverse function of I reference. If this voltage is given as input for M2, by that time I out is function of VGS, that is I out is function of function inverse of I reference, function function inverse get cancelled, so I out will become I reference. This is nothing but principle of CMOS current mirror, simple CMOS current mirror. So that entire CMOS circuit current mirror can be treated as a current source equivalent that current source equivalent is nothing but I naught. So this is a schematic and this is symbol equivalent. So current flowing through it, this is nothing but now output current. So this is I naught and it is VSS. Basic current mirror schematic and symbol. Applications of current mirror, where it will be used. Current mirrors can be used as biasing elements, which is results in superior insensibility of circuit performance to variation in power supply and temperature. Current mirrors will be used to generate current references and voltage references so that they are going to be invariable with power supply fluctuations and temperature variations. And they can also be act as active load. So this is, if you are looking at this diagram, this is a simple differential amplifier. In that differential amplifier, M1, M2 are going to be differential pair transistors. And here it is IE normally. This is the constant current. That constant current is referred, constant current is biased by this current mirror, M0 and this one. If M0 and this transistor is going to be having equal ratios at that time, you will get I references IT. But in this diagram, it is 5 times of W by L. So that IT is equal to 5 times of I reference. And here, there also we will get collector currents IC1, IC2. They are also provided with biasing of current sources. Now this is PMOS transistors. PMOS transistors are going to be acting as current sources, NMOS transistors act as current sinks. So this is current source. The current supplied by this supplied into this collector of mm, drain of M1 is supplied by this current source 
and this current source is going to be supplying drain of M2 transistor current required for drain of M2 transistor current mirrors are acting used as active load for amplifier stages whenever they are used as active load at the time which gives higher voltage gains even at low power supply voltages because they are having high output resistance what is the ideal value of output resistance of current mirror ideal value of output resistance of current mirror is infinite because if you are going with current mirror this is <coughs> output impedance is nothing but output voltage divided by output current so V naught divided by I naught is nothing but output impedance output impedance is V naught divided by I naught so changes in V naught divided by changes in I naught will give the AC impedance changes in I naught is 0 so denominator is 0 so something divided by 0 is nothing but infinite ideally current mirror has infinite output impedance and it can be act as current active load so look at this diagram this is differential pair and here R04 is nothing but passive transistor this passive transistor can be replaced with a current mirror M3 M4 are going to be PMOS transistors which are forming a current source and that current is now referenced and it is passed into this it is flowing into M2 transistor so a simple passive resistor can be replaced with current mirrors next application <coughs> this is common source amplifier Q1 is going to be acting as a transistor and for that one input is given to at gate and this is source is grounded so that it is treated as common source and output is taking across drain so common source amplifier generally common source amplifiers will be having a passive resistor from drain to VDD so that that resistor is now replaced with this current source next this is common drain or source follower amplifier common drain or source follower now drain is common and source is output terminal input terminal is gate this is NMOS transistor for that one this is drain drain is grounded and source is given with output terminal input is connected gate so across here normally we will find a passive resistor in common drain or source follower that passive resistor is replaced passive resistor is replaced with this current mirror third application some analog to digital converters and digital to analog converters employ an array of current sources to produce analog output proportional to digital output so A to D and D to A converters internally they are using the current mirrors one more important point about current mirrors is current mirrors are more economical than passive resistors in terms of die area required to provide bias current of certain value if you require a certain value of current at that time to get a resistor for that one is very very difficult and it requires large area while fabricating but the same resistance value you can get with current mirror with less area ideal characteristics of current mirrors ideal characteristics of current mirrors first one output current must be equal to input current multiply by a desired current gain first one output current must be equal to input current multiplied by a desired current gain so here you the desired current gain may be 1 whenever it is 1 it is treated as simple current mirror and whenever it is greater than or less than 1 at that time also it is treated as current mirror with a multiplication factor second one output current should be independent of output voltage output current should be independent of output voltage the other way of saying this second point is nothing but R0 is equal to infinite output impedance of current mirror is infinite this is ideal value since output impedance is infinite at that time I out is independent of output voltage third one 
gain of current mirror should be independent of input signal frequency gain of current mirror should be independent of input signal frequency for the given input signal how much current gain you are getting that you must get even though the input signal frequency is 1 hertz 10 hertz 10 megahertz or 1 gigahertz so current mirror gain should be independent of input signal frequency these are the ideal characteristics limitations of ideal current mirrors output current varies with output voltage which will be characterized by output resistance so what we think ideally is output resistance is infinite that is output current is independent of output voltage but practically this never met output current will always depends on output voltage that is what we call it as channel length modulation even when even VDS increases at that time ID increases slightly for the given VGS if channel length modulation effect is considered and by that time R0 cannot be infinite now R0 is finite so first point is nothing but R0 is finite the other way second point minimum positive output voltage is required to operate the mirror in saturation region if the current mirror has to work in saturation and it is providing the mirror amount at that time you must maintain some output voltage across its terminals so that the transistor is in saturation that voltage is treated as minimum positive output voltage minimum output voltage required to keep the output transistor in saturation such that we can expect the mirror current or multiples of current so but the ideally it must be zero so that a signal can swing from zero to VDD but whenever it is going to be minimum of some voltage at that time the signal swing starts from that voltage towards VDD so signal voltage signal swing is going to be reduces as V0 minimum increases signal swing is going to be reduces ideally V0 minimum should be zero third one there is always a gain error which is not exactly constant which is the deviation of gain of current mirror from its ideal value ideally the gain is different practically what you are getting is slightly different that may be results because of mismatches in layout and some other reasons also